I thought this case study entailed my Uncle Michael's kids, Pooter, Tasha, Krisha. And right now, my son being in Onamia, uh, and he ain't responding, you know, it's a problem for me. And I got anxiety. And like I said, somebody might have been my mom's house. And I knew her as Tina Honeycutt. Tina's, Tina told me a story at the old Department of Welfare around the time we had that 4th of, a, uh, 4th of July picnic down there at Boom Island. You know, I'm going to go to my storage locker now. Ooh, shit. Watch what you're doing, Sharon. I'm going to go to my storage locker now. Uh, I'm going to feel that shit later. That shit hurt my back. But I thought this was uh, under the Minnesota Business Association, one of the looted stores where the employees was willing to play the Keith Ellison Wall Street game. Uh, because a lot of them were welfare recipients going back to work, uh, the welfare reform, and they told them that I was a disease and I was causing problems. But I said that in order to do that study, they had to get a lump sum of money. And I said the lump sum of money they got to do the study was my money. They stole some money due me in a settlement. And I didn't ask nobody to believe me. It wasn't, it wasn't up to you because I don't think you're as educated as me. I don't think you was part of my lawsuit. And I don't think you was in my bed when I had my kids to sue for them and then realize I could have claims due me from my own self. So as I wander down here to my storage locker, I just want to make myself clear with Barb Johnson, Don Samuels, and uh, Miss Palmasino of the old city council. Uh, like I said, I said you guys owed me some money. And then I sued the city uh, attorney's office under the public defender's office where Rochelle Stratton and then prosecutor Jacqueline Bullio resided. And I drew up a fee schedule. And then I said when I work on the weekends and I draft motions, form arguments and complaints where I've shown that they violated some type of law specific to my human rights to complain about them stealing my money that we just talked about doing Keith's case study of the Black Wall Street where I felt like he was violating my rights to housing, transportation, even my belongings. I don't think one of them women in North Minneapolis had an ashtray from kindergarten like I did in the condition that I did that I kept from my children. I just don't think under my case study, a lot of them women would stand up to me. They might be able to do it now going forward. Well, I'm going to say that now from 2013 and now they're saving shit, but they weren't saving it at the time I did. And when I asked for that blue bin, Michelle Bethke Kelleher, and they gave me, uh, like I said, a milk crate with some old ass papers about Pratt, some naked pictures me and Michael made in my early 20s, uh, I was insulted. I said, ain't this a bitch? And then I had to sit at my daddy's house at Georgetown and watch you reality show bitches do eyebrows as I went before Lionel Norris, and I thought that was mocking me. I really thought that reality show was a bunch of reality star bitches mocking me through Oprah Winfrey, Harpo Entertainment, and they thought that shit was cute and funny, and I didn't. I said, I don't want to go to Hot Lena. No offense. I mean, I might want a vacation there, but I don't want to live in the Silicon Valley of the black people with all the weed that's on, you know, lay by. I'd rather put a fucking yard set on fucking lay by some fucking weed, stupid bitch.